Hey guys, Miss Marisic here, and in this video, we're going to talk about simple calculations involving pH, as well as calculations involving strong acids and strong bases. Now, in our previous video, we talked about the idea that as temperature increases, the Kw would increase above 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Um, our maximum pH of our scale would decrease below 14, and our pH that is considered neutral would decrease below 7. And so it was really important to address what the temperature was so we could get the right variables to plug into our formulas. Um, however, you'll notice in all of these problems, temperature is not even mentioned. And you're like, well, wait, I thought temperature was important to mention. Well, it is. But if it's not mentioned, then we just naturally assume we're at standard ambient temperature conditions of 25 degrees Celsius. So if temperature is not mentioned, just assume that we're at those standard ambient conditions. And so you're not going to have to worry about doing anything crazy with your calculations. So as far as trying to solve these, the first thing I would do is go write down what variable do I already know and what variable am I trying to get to? So for example, here, I know that hydronium ion concentration is 4.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. Remember, hydronium is the same thing as hydrogen ion concentration. And I am looking here for the hydroxide ion concentration. And so I would go consult my formula chart and try and find a formula that has both hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration. And I see that that would be our KW formula of hydrogen ion times hydroxide ion equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. And so that's going to be the formula I'm going to write down. And I'm going to just start plugging in my variables into that. And so... What I would do is I would have this 4.3 times 10 to the negative 6 plugged in for H+. Plus. My OH is what I'm trying to solve. So if it makes you feel better about algebra, you could put an X there. And that's going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Your goal now is to solve for OH. It's your algebraic unknown. And so to get it by itself, I would need to divide that 4.3 times 10 to the negative 6 the number over. Um, so to do that, I want to use the E key in my calculator. Please don't use times, tens, carats, because that's going to really mess up your order of operations. So I would do 1 second E to the negative 14th divided by 4.3 second e to the negative sixth. And so that's going to get this value right here. Now a couple things as far as sig fix, this one did not involve any kind of logarithms or powers or anything like that. So however many sig figs were in the original number is how many I would use here. So I'm going to use two sig figs. Um, I would also want to include a unit. Um, here, since I'm calculating a concentration, I would want to put molarity. Now, they also ask the question here, is the solution acidic or basic? Here, conveniently, we already had both hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. I notice the hydrogen ion is 10 to the negative 6, which is greater than hydroxide at 10 to the negative 9th. And so since the hydrogen is in greater concentration than hydroxide, I would assume that I am acidic. All right, on our next one, they give us pOH and they want us to find the pH. So again, I would go and try and find a formula that has both of those in it on my formula chart. And the one we notice that has both of those variables in it is 14 equals pH plus pOH. And so I would just plug into that lovely formula. Now to do that, what happens is that if pOH ends up being 5.6, I can subtract that from the 14 to get the pH. And so that gets me a pH value of 8.4. By the way, pH does not have a unit, and so I would just leave it blank at the end of that number. That gave me a pH above 7, but I have to be careful about specifying that that's at 25 degrees Celsius. Because remember, if I changed from 25 degrees Celsius, I might need to be above a different number than just simply 7. Um, here, since I'm above 7 at 25 degrees Celsius, I assume that I have a basic solution here. All right, on the next one, it says, hey, if the pH is known to be 4.2, what is the hydrogen ion concentration? So again, I'm going to go consult my formula chart here. Now, on this one, what happens is that I have a formula that has pH and H plus both in it. But the problem is, is that if I plug in pH, that's going to leave my unknown variable of H plus right here with having to undo that negative logarithm. I'm going to have to undo that base 10 logarithmic function. And so if I think about the formula I could use to do that, it would be the formula that we talked about 
on our last video that's not on the formula chart that 10 to the negative pH would equal my H plus concentration. Remember, we have the same formula with pOH and the OH concentration that you could use as well. And so to plug into this one, I would just simply do 10 raised to the negative 4.2. Now, if I was trying to kind of approximate what I would expect to see here, remember the pH not being one is gonna be a little bit below whatever the exponent ends up being on my number. And you notice here, I end up getting negative fifth. And so ignoring the negative, the five is a little bit above the 4.2 value. Um, now, as far as sig figs on this one, here's where it gets kind of interesting. Um, this power, this logarithmic function had only one place past the decimal. So that means I really only had to show one significant figure on my concentration. Now, I'll be honest, do I think this is probably gonna be the sig fig question on the AP test? Eh, probably not. But that is the technical rule that you are allowed to use on these. Now, the next one had kind of the same two variables. It's just now we know the H plus concentration, and so we're trying to solve the pH. So now I can use that negative log equation that one makes sense to use here. And so what I would do is I would just simply take the negative log of that 5.5 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now, when I plug this in my calculator, I would just hit the negative button. And then the logarithmic button is usually right next to the seven if you haven't used that one yet. Okay, and that'll open up a parentheses that then I can put my 5.5 second e to the negative 10 in. Now, here again, I look at how many sig figs this concentration had. It had two, so I would want to report two places past the decimal here. So that's how I'm deciding the 9.26. Since the pH is above seven, when I'm assuming the temperature is at 25 degrees Celsius, that would indicate a basic solution. All right, let's step up our game a little bit. Here's where we get kind of interesting. This next problem here says, hey, if the pOH of a solution is 3.4, what is the H plus concentration? So I went ahead and jotted down those variables here. But when I start to go look at my formula chart and I try to find a formula that has both of those variables in it, there's not one. So I'm going to have to get a little more creative here on the way I'm solving this. Now, I'm going to actually go back and reference for just a moment uh, the note sheet from last video. Okay, it had a flow chart in it that looks something like this, okay? And you notice that if I am at pOH, which is right here, and I'm trying to get to H+, plus, there's not a direct link between those. So I'm gonna to have to use a combination of two formulas. Now you technically have two options here. Option one is that you could do 10 to the negative pOH that you have to solve your OH concentration. And then you could use the OH times the H ion to give one times 10 to the negative 14th to solve the hydrogen ion concentration. Would that work? Absolutely. But I'll be honest, I usually use this other pathway. I usually convert the pOH into a pH using the fact that they add up to be 14. And then I would do my 10 to the negative pH. Um, this path, I feel like, I don't know, the math is a little easier. Like it's easier to do that addition subtraction math than it is to do this multiplying dividing math. Maybe that's just a personal preference. I don't know. And so with that said, here's what I ended up getting. Okay, so again, I had to use two formulas here. So the first one I did was pH plus pOH equals 14. So I did 14 minus the 3.4 to get a pH of 10.6. And then what I did is I said, okay, let me do that H plus is equal to 10 to the negative pH. So it's equal 10 to the negative 10.6. And so again, that only had one place past the decimal. And so therefore I only had to show one sig fig in my given answer here. Um, by the way, here the pH was above seven at 25 degrees Celsius. 
So we consider to this to be basic. All right, here's what I want you to do. For just a moment, I want you to pause the video and see if you can solve the next example. I will warn you, it too will need two formulas. So go ahead, pause it, try it out. All right, did you try it out? Are you ready to check your answer? All right, here's what I got. Let me scooch it up here. And so you can see if you match up with mine. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and look at the next page where we're gonna talk about doing this same process with strong acids and bases. So as a reminder, strong acids and bases dissociate 100%. All of the substance that you have will split into ions. And what that means is that strong acids and bases are gonna be really easy to calculate what's going on. So first off, it gives us here that we wanna calculate the pH of a 0 0.023 molar HCl solution. Well, to calculate pH, I need either an H plus concentration or an OH concentration. I need one of those variables that's in all of those formulas that we have on our formula chart. And I'm like, well, I know that HCl is gonna split up into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So let's use that to our advantage. Now, as far as showing the work here, some way, somehow, you need to address that there is a one-to-one -one ratio between HCl and H+. And so what that would mean is that whatever molarity I had of HCl to begin with, that's gonna all go away and give me that concentration of H plus ions at the end of this. Now, I set this up with the rice table, which looks kind of odd to some of you because I know some of you are only used to using rice tables at equilibrium, but you can still use a rice table for something that's not equilibrium. You just have to you know, approach it from the standpoint that all of this is gonna change. It's not just gonna be a partial change between these all of this HCl is going away and all of it is becoming hydrogen ions and chloride ions, which honestly makes it easier. Now, the other way you could do this is with stoic. You could say, hey, if I have 0 0.023 moles of HCl per every one liter, you could then set up a mole to mole ratio between the HCl and the hydrogen within. Some way, somehow, you've got to address that mole to mole ratio. And so what that would mean is that my hydrogen ion concentration is 0 0.023 molarity. And so just like we did on the previous page, I can then take the negative log of that hydrogen ion concentration and determine my pH. Here, my hydrogen ion concentration had two significant figures and so I was able to show two places past the decimal. Now, this was obviously a strong acid. Hydrochloric is one of our strong acids on our list. If this had been a weak acid, I would have to approach this in a totally different way because a weak acid wouldn't completely split up into ions like this. It would only partially split up into ions, and so I would have to be given an equilibrium constant to calculate with it. And we're gonna be doing that here in our next video. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Here, I have a strong base of calcium hydroxide, a group one or two hydroxide except B, E, and M, G. And they are asking us again about pH. Um, again, I can't use the calcium hydroxide directly in one of my equations to solve pH, so I wanna think about splitting up that calcium hydroxide and maybe one of the ions that I create can help me solve my pH. Now, with calcium hydroxide, I am gonna make one calcium and two hydroxides. So when that calcium hydroxide completely goes away because it's strong, the calcium and the hydroxide would both gain. However, the hydroxide is gonna gain double the moles of the other ones. And so that will give me 0 0.046 molarity of the hydroxide at the end. Um, so keep in mind that you really have to address those mole to mole ratios, especially when you have a one to two ratio like you do here. Every calcium hydroxide particle in that solution is gonna break up and make two of those hydroxide ions 
in that same amount of solution. So that's why that molarity would double there. Now we know hydroxide I could use to solve pH. We have some formulas there for that, but it is going to take more than one formula. Just like the ones we saw on the previous page, there is no equation that gets me straight all the way from hydroxide ion over to pH. Now you do have some options here. I, on this one, would typically take my OH concentration and do the negative log of it, which would get me the pOH value. So then I can say, hey, pH plus pOH equals 14. So if I do 14 and subtract that 1.34, that will get me my pH value of 12.66. Now, whenever I get an answer for pH, I always ask myself, does it make sense for what I have? So for example, back up here, think about would a pH of 1.64 make, make sense for something that's an acid? And I'm like, oh yeah, that would make sense because we know acids typically have a pH lower than 7 at 25 degrees Celsius. Same thing goes here. I would ask myself, well, does a pH of 12.66 make sense for calcium hydroxide, which is a base? And in fact, it does because it's a pH that's above 7 at 25 degrees Celsius. The common mistake I see people make on this particular problem is they forget that when they get this 1.34 here, that this is pOH and not pH. And so if you for a hot second thought it was pH, ask yourself if this makes sense for a base. And hopefully we would figure out that, oh, no, no, that doesn't make sense. And so sometimes you catch your mistake in just double checking that your answer makes sense. Now we've got one more problem here. This one is kind of the backwards version of the one we just did. What they give us here is a pH h value and want us to figure out the original molarity of the base and so i think about okay barium hydroxide has oh in it if i can figure out the hydroxide ion concentration then maybe i can get back to the original base so what i did first is i took the ph and worked my way to hydroxide ion concentration. Now again, that did take two formulas. I had to use it, the pH plus the pOH equals 14. So I did 14 minus the 11.75 to get the pOH of 2.25. So then my hydroxide ion is always 10 to the negative pOH. And so that would get me 0 0.0056 molarity. Now, when you get that hydroxide ion concentration, that is for however many hydroxides you had, whether it's one hydroxide, two hydroxides, or 20 hydroxides. All of the hydroxide together has that concentration. So when I went and started making my rice table, I would have started off with my reaction here, and I would have went and put in that 0 0.0056 molarity in for hydroxide. And then I would have said, hey, to get that at the end, I would have had to have 0 0.0028 get doubled to get me that 0 0.0056. And so in order to get to these other concentrations, I would use that to my advantage. So notice basically, once I realized that that was for a coefficient of 2 and everything else was a coefficient of 1, I needed to cut that 0 0.0056 in half. And what that ended up doing is as I worked backwards in my rice table, that would have given me a value here of 0 0.0028 molarity for the barium hydroxide. Now, another way you could have approached it is once you get this molarity, that is the moles of hydroxide per liter of solution. And so what I could have done is I could have said, hey, for every two moles of hydroxide, there's one mole of barium hydroxide, and that would have gotten you to the exact same answer here. So kind of a take your pick, but some way, somehow, you have to address that mole to mole ratio, whether you're doing it with a stoichiometry setup or if you're doing it with some sort of modified rice table. So a little bit different than a normal equilibrium rice table because it's not doing equilibrium, but I can still use that same setup in order to figure out what's going on. All right, I hope we are feeling good about calculating with pH, pOH, 
H plus concentration, OH concentration, all the good formulas. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.